So Gauss quadrature is a way to compute very, very accurate integrals for arbitrary smooth functions. And in finite element, we are usually looking at very smooth functions, smooth functions in every single element. The integral you're going to be computing, the integrand you'll be computing, is not going to be smooth only across the element boundaries. Right? So, so if you just uh, zoom in into a single element, these are usually very smooth functions, linear functions, bilinear functions, or Fourier series, like sine functions, they are all very smooth. So Gauss quadrature is like an ideal candidate for computing these because they, are, they work very well for all smooth functions. Okay, um, I believe, um, so actually starting next week, uh, it'll be a different uh, uh, lecturer lecturing the, the boundary element part of this uh, class. And I'll come back after the boundary element and uh, discuss more advanced uh, topics. But I, I believe in the boundary element part, uh, we'll dive into Gauss quadrature uh, in a bit more depth. So, so here, I'm only gonna be teaching what we really need to do the project. Okay, so, so Gauss quadrature uh, is actually quite interesting. It basically approximates, it approximates a function uh, what? It approximates a function of x. So let's start in 1D. Okay. It approximates an arbitrary, it approximates actually not the function itself, but the integral of this function. Using the integral over several delta functions. So integration over, uh, let's say, a let's just uh, make it uh, uh, a and b, of fx dx, it basically approximated as an integral of several delta functions. So basically, f at xi times a delta i of x dx, where this delta i is actually what is special about this Gauss quadrature. Um, so, because these are delta functions, each delta function has a has a particular uh, has a particular location and a particular weight. So, delta i has weight w i and uh, location. Uh, well, this is actually just the f of x times this delta function and location x i. Okay, and uh, uh, so, so that means I can, this integral can be written as a summation of i goes from 1 to n, n is the number of Gauss quadrature points, f at xi times wi. Right, so, so basically what this is doing is that an integral can be represented as a finite summation. And this finite summation is uh, uh, only requires the function evaluation at a discrete set of points x i. So the delta functions which are represented by the location and weights are derived in such a way to make this formula exact for as high order polynomial as possible. So what does that mean? That means if I have n delta functions, that means I have two n coefficients to play with to make the formula as accurate as possible, right? And if I only care about polynomials, which is what Gauss did, then how many terms, how many degrees of freedoms do I have in the polynomial if I want to make the equation exact for polynomials of this particular number of terms. 2n, right? I have 2n terms in the polynomial I, I can have, which means I have a constant term, right? I have a first order term, etc., up to 2n minus 1th order terms. 
right? So basically, what this is saying is that I can tune these x's and w's to make this equation exact for all polynomials of order 2n minus 1. Okay. So this is uh, uh, the. So Gauss actually not only figured this out, but also figured out a very uh, faster and numerically stable way of computing these xi's and wi's. It's not just uh, solving a bunch of uh, equations that actually satisfies, it reinforces these constraints. It involves finding the roots of uh, orthogonal polynomials and things like that. So what we are discussing here, uh, we won't be discussing how do we compute this, but just to use this and existing code to do this. So this is, uh, somehow MATLAB doesn't come with a, a standard, uh, uh, doesn't come up, it didn't come up with a standard function to compute this. But like you can, you can search for uh, Gauss quadrature and you get a bunch of uh, uh, scripts on the internet, you can, you can compute this. So for example, what I compute out of this is the location and weights of Gauss quadrature. And uh, uh, so what I need to have an input is, for example, the number of points, n, and my interval. So let's, for example, I just want one point over interval minus one and one. Okay, so can somebody just uh, tell me from the definition of Gauss, Gauss quadrature, if I just want one point, I can only hope to integrate exactly equa uh, polynomials of degree what? One, right? 2n minus 1 is equal to 1 if n is equal to 1. So what is polynomials of order 1? Linear functions, right? Okay, so if I only allowed to choose one point, which point should I choose? so that this formula is exact for linear functions. The midpoint, right? So linear functions are like that. So if I have linear functions, uh, linear functions are like that. And the area underneath can be exactly equal to the area underneath the line if I choose the line to be the midpoint. So if I have my a equal to minus 1, b equal to 1, my x should be 0. Right, and my weight should be two. Well, because the the interval of the domain is of the length two, right? So my weight actually should be two. Okay, so if I instead if I choose two points, then I'm allowed to integrate polynomials of order three, right? Okay, and by the way, if I have two points, all of these can be integrated exactly if my, oh, actually this I only need uh, uh, one point. If, if h is piecewise linear, I only need one point in integrating the gradients. But if I want to integrate also the right hand sides, then I need to go to, uh, if my right hand if my right hand side is also piecewise linear and my uh, h is piecewise linear, then the right hand side need a uh, 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 two points Gauss quadrature. So if I get two points, I have this uh, uh, strange uh, 0.57 and minus 0.57, right? So these are the two points. It turns out where I can choose if I set the ways to be one and one, uh, not only a quadratic, but also a cubic function, okay? And uh, if I use three points, then I, uh, I also have a symmetric arrangements, right? I have uh, ways to be like that. and if you choose, let's say, 100 points and uh, plot x, w, uh, you basically get arrangements like that. It's pretty beautiful uh, functions. Basically, you have, you have the axes spaced uh, closer to each other at the two ends and the sparser from each other in the middle and the weights correspondingly have smaller weights at the two ends and the highest weight in the middle. So these are, these are the kind of functions you can use, uh, even if you use Fourier, for example. Uh, they are not exactly polynomials, but like if you use uh, enough points, you can get almost uh, numerically exact integrations. Uh, you, can, you can show that for smooth functions, for analytic functions, which means functions whose 
whose uh, uh, that is infinite differentiable and whose theta series converges. You can you can prove that Gauss quadrature converges exponentially fast, which means if you if you increase the number of points, every time you increase for one more point, the the error you get in your uh, integral actually decreases by a constant factor. So so which means like if you uh, what you get in the log log plot, uh, if you have a log of error, log of n, the kind of a convergence we usually get, like if you have first order convergence, you have a slope of 1. If you have a second order convergence, you have a slope of 2, right? Gauss quadrature doesn't have a slope, it just uh, keeps curving down. So, so these are the kind of exponential convergence you get. And uh, with a pretty small number of points, you can get a less error than your computer can represent, like less than 10 to the minus 18, pretty easily. So this is uh, something amazing about cost quadrature. Uh, I hope uh, everybody will find useful, not only in this class, but also in the future.